See, I told you, you've already gotten done one part. Only three more parts left. Three more, three, three, three more parts left. Hey, listen, in case you have to go and you gotta come back to see part two, three and four later, make sure you ask your questions at orientation at texarkanacollege.edu. That's orientation at texarkanacollege.edu. And again, make sure you check out this website at texarkanacollege.edu slash orientation to get more information and resources related to orientation in your first couple of weeks here at TC. Welcome to part two, part two of College 101 Orientation. You're almost halfway done. Our part two orientation is very important, particularly because we talk about our TC protocols for COVID and we also give you important information about campus safety. I encourage you to buckle up, take good notes and make sure you get as much resources as possible from this particular part two segment. And then we also talk about the importance of stepping out of the box. Don't allow yourself to be too comfortable. Allow yourself to be able to step out of the box. Enjoy part two of College 101 Student Orientation here at TC. Hello and welcome to Dexter Canna College. We are so happy you've chosen TC. You've made the smart choice. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Phyllis Deese and I'm the Vice President of Administrative Services. I have a variety of responsibilities here at TC, including human resources, compliance, and safety. I also serve as the Title IX Coordinator and Discrimination Officer for Texarkana College, and I'd like to talk more about that to you now. Texarkana College has very specific policies on freedom from discrimination, harassment, and retaliation, including sexual misconduct. I want you all to know that I am the one you can contact if you have a situation on campus that you would like to report. There is a great deal of information available to you in the student handbook and on our website about this. Specifically, information on sexual misconduct, including definitions, how to report, and procedures for grievances and investigations are all available to you. On the TC website homepage, there is a link at the bottom of the page called sexual misconduct. You can also see information on the public safety page of our website about this and a number of other safety links. On that note, another important link on the public safety page is how to be notified by text in the event of an emergency. We refer to these as rave alerts. It is vital that you keep your phone contact information updated with TC. Weather emergencies, safety emergencies, and other general information texts go out to all students and employees through RAVE, and we want to keep you informed. If you do change your phone number, please notify the Enrollment Services Office as soon as possible. The last thing I'd like to talk with you about is camp campus safety with regard to COVID-19. Our world looks different now with the current pandemic and how we conduct our daily lives now must include additional safety measures for our health. TC has taken extensive steps to help ensure the safety of our students, faculty, and staff. If you haven't come on campus yet, let me talk to you about what to expect. Anyone coming on campus who plans to enter any building must first go through our screening station. We have stations located at the front of campus off Robinson Road and in front of the workforce building on the back of the campus. The Robinson Road station is open from 6.30 a.m. until 7 or 7.30 p.m., depending on the day of the week and class schedule. And the station by workforce is open every morning from 6.30 a.m. until 9 a.m. At the station, you'll be asked questions about your health related to COVID. You will also have your temperature checked to be sure you are not running fever. You will need to be wearing a face mask or shield at the screening. If everything is good, you will be given a wristband for the day. To enter any building, you must wear a mask and have a wristband. You will also be asked to apply hand sanitizer before proceeding into the building. 
All buildings on campus have a social distancing plan from the administration building to all instructional spaces. We are also limiting the entrances to every building to be sure that we maintain building occupancy requirements and to verify that everyone has masks and wristbands. We ask that you and everyone follow these precautions fully. It takes all of us to be sure that we stay safe during this time. You're about to see a short video about these safety measures that shows you how it all works. Texarkana College is a great place to be. We care about your success, we care about your safety, and we care about your future. Thank you for choosing us. Hey Bulldogs, we've missed seeing you on campus and we're excited to welcome you back to Texarkana College. Keeping you and our employees safe is our highest priority. So we've put some health and safety measures in place to help protect you and everyone around you during the COVID-19 pandemic. When you come back to campus, here's what you can expect. Every single student, employee, and visitor who will be entering a building will be required to check in upon entering campus. So we'll ask you to enter campus using one of these designated entry points. When you turn into campus, you'll pull up under the carport and stop for screening from one of our licensed healthcare workers. We recommend that you arrive on campus early to leave plenty of time to complete your screening. These screening stations will have limited hours, so watch for emails from your instructors that will include screening station hours. Our healthcare workers will take your temperature using a no-touch infrared thermometer to make sure you aren't running a fever. Then, they'll ask you a series of questions about any recent symptoms you may have or places you've traveled, and they'll ask you to provide your name and the campus building you'll be entering. Once they're finished, they'll give you a colored wristband. This wristband is very important. It will be required for you to enter any campus buildings or facilities. If you have a fever or your answers show that you might be at risk of carrying COVID-19, you'll be asked to return home and contact your instructor or supervisor for further instructions. Each building will have a single entrance that everyone is required to use. All other entrances will be locked. Just inside the door, an employee will check to see that you have a wristband, write down your name, and ask you to use hand sanitizer. If there's a line, these floor stickers will help you stand at a safe distance from others in line. Once you enter a building, you'll be required to wear a mask. Studies show that wearing a mask protects not just the person wearing it, but also everyone else around them. You'll also be required to maintain a six foot distance between yourself and others and frequently use hand sanitizer. While on campus, remember the CDC hygiene guidelines for staying well. Wash hands frequently, avoid touching your face, and continue to wear your mask when not able to maintain social distancing from others. Some classrooms and labs will have a sign near the door showing their maximum occupancy. Inside of classrooms and labs, you may see some workstations, desks, and work tables marked with signs. Those areas will be blocked off to help ensure that you are able to maintain a six-foot distance between yourself and other students. Our custodial staff has also increased the frequency of cleaning and sanitizing, especially in high-touch places like restrooms and doorknobs. This summer, our campus will be closed on Fridays for sanitation and deep cleaning. You'll see hand sanitizing stations throughout our campus buildings, and we are limiting the numbers of students and employees in each building on campus according to local and state guidelines. We've also installed sneeze guards in areas where you might have direct contact with employees, such as in enrollment services and the financial aid office. Thank you for helping us make our campus a safe place for all students and employees. We'll see you soon. Hello, welcome to TC. Uh, my name is Stephen Gass. I'm the Chief of Police for the Texas County College Police Department. I'm really glad that you have chosen TC and to become a part of the Texas County College family. Um, as part of the, the college family, college community, we really emphasize safety on our campus. And that's one of the things I'd like to talk to you very briefly about. Uh, we have a lot of information that will assist you as you go throughout this journey on uh, Texas County College. Um, that will help you out on our college webpage. If you go onto the TC um, website and go to the public safety webpage, you'll find um, information as far as reports that are important for you. Also some resources for some videos that you can um, look at that will help you with some safety. And at the um, conclusion, I'm gonna 
direct you to a video that is going to be very important for you to watch for your safety and then also all the safety of those around you. Just a few quick things um, to think about as you um, come on to our campus. Uh, we do have some requirements. One is an ID. Make sure that you always have an ID. That is a state law in Texas that you must always have an ID present with you on a college campus. So make sure you have that. It also helps us to identify who is on campus um, appropriately and who is not. Another is a parking sticker. And you should have gotten some information um, already sent to you about getting a parking sticker. If you already have a parking sticker, there is no need for you to request another one. It's good for your whole time at uh, Texas County College. And so um, we will be able to locate your vehicle if needed in an emergency, but we also know which vehicles belong on campus. Um, if you have not already received one and placed it on your vehicle, um, you do have information on how to request that and it can be picked up on the, um, at the administration building or also at the media center. Um, but once you put it on your car, it's there to stay. You do not have to get one every semester. And so make sure you do that. It's a very uh, important part of our campus safety plan. And so if you do need extras, they can be um, obtained. Another thing is, and if you would get out your phone right now, um, you know, and look at your phone, there's a number that we want you to make sure and put into your phone. And that is the emergency number to the Texarkana College Police Department. It is 903-798-3330. Again, that is 903-798-3330. Um, Texarkana College has its own police department. Um, we have some very um, uh, experienced, well-trained officers on our campus. And if there is an emergency on campus, our officers are um, always here when you're here um, and able to respond very quickly. Obviously, if you get nervous and you dial 911, um, Texarkana, Texas Police Department will respond and they'll also notify us. Um, so it's very important that you, um, you do call us first because we are the closest um, and able to respond the quickest. But if you forget and dial 911, that's okay. Just um, they'll refer it to us, but also try to get somebody to call us. In the case of a medical emergency, what we would like for you to do is dial the 903-798-3330 so their officers can respond, but also go ahead and call 911, advise them where you're at, and so that they can go ahead and send the ambulance and fire as needed. Um, and so that is important on medical emergencies to go ahead and call both 911 and then also our Texarkana College Police Department. Um, one of the other aspects to be aware of with Texarkana College, as all colleges in the state of Texas, is we are a concealed carry campus. And what that means is if you have a license to carry from the state of Texas or you have a concealed carry permit, um, from another uh, state that we have a reciprocal agreement on, you can carry a handgun on our campus as long as it is concealed. There is no open carry unless you're a uh, licensed peace officer. Um, it must be concealed. And what that means is it must be on or about your person. Um, if you'll look at these pictures on the PowerPoint um, and notice, you know, if it's something that is, is visible, um, or away from you, that is, that is not in compliance. What we're talking about on concealed is, ladies, if it's in a purse, that purse must be right there, readily accessible to you. It cannot be on a desk behind you or the desk beside you. Um, uh, you know, um, needs to be down there around your feet or in your lap. If it's in a backpack, the same thing. Obviously, that means that if you're going to the Pinkerton Center, you cannot leave a um, handgun in a backpack leaned against the wall or um, over in a locker. It must be on or about your person, readily accessible to you. Um, in those cases, just make sure and secure it um, in a vehicle that is parked legally on the campus um, or somewhere, but you must keep it on or about your person. And so, um, you know, if you do see somebody that you believe is armed, please call our emergency number, notify us, um, and we will come and address that. Um, and so that is something that is very important. If you are concealed carry, um, remember that is for your protection and the protection of others. Um, but with our campus, one of the things that we, we do want is to make sure that you're very well prepared um, for those emergencies. Um, we know things happen, you know, and you can call us if you have a, a dead battery or a flat on your car, but we're here to make sure that we work with you as a part of the campus community and staying safe. And part of that is always being aware of your surroundings, aware of people around you, um, and notifying those um, that need to be notified if you do see something suspicious. Um, the video I'm going to end with here 
It's called Run, Hide, Fight. You can also look at this along with another video that's um, very important on our public safety website. Um, feel free to show it to your friends, your family, and everybody. Um, but be aware of your surroundings and those around you and what you need to do in the case of an, an active shooting or active killing situation on our campus. Um, and so I'm gonna leave you with that video again. Um, welcome to Texarkana College. We're really glad that you're here. Um, we're excited. We're excited for the new year, excited for the new semester. We know there's going to be a few changes, but we also know that if we all work together, we wear a mask, we check, we make sure that we're, we're cognizant of ourselves and also of our surroundings. We're going to have a great year. Welcome. Have a good day. Thank you. It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. Sometimes, bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. The warning signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you are out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, if your life is at risk, whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight, act with aggression, improvise weapons, disarm him, and commit to taking the shooter down. 
no matter what. <laughs> Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. Your actions can make a difference for your safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. Be willing to step out of the box. Ah, it's easier said than done. You stepped out of the box when you filled out your application to come here. You stepped out of the box when you did that long, <laughs> awful financial aid application. You stepped out of the box just by joining this orientation today. Stepping out of the box is uncomfortable, but in order to be comfortable, sometimes we have to be uncomfortable. And so each morning I get on this treadmill and each morning, I have to press the start button. And every time I press the start button, it reminds me that I'm starting something new. We're starting something new every single day. And the good thing about starting things new every day is you're able to erase the past. So don't be afraid about starting things new. Don't be afraid about getting out of your comfort zone because getting out of your comfort zone is not gonna be able to not only inspire you, but it's gonna inspire others as well. And sometimes when we're getting out of our comfort zone, sometimes when we're stepping out of the box, it, it looks a little scary. It looks a little different for us. But I guarantee you, when you surround yourself with good people who are going in the same direction when you are, notice these treadmills are all in one line. When everybody's running in the same direction, everybody's going the same way. And so our uncomfortable ability becomes more comfortable. But in order to become more comfortable, we have to be willing to step out of the box be willing to step out of the box. For me, my first encounter of stepping out of the box was 20 years ago when I boarded the United Airlines flight at 11.59 at night. I'll never forget it because I was going from Los Angeles to Columbus, Ohio, which then would take me to Wilberforce, Ohio, which would then start my collegiate journey. Yeah, 20 years ago. And I'll never forget that because when I was walking down the jet bridge to get on the airplane, I could not allow myself to look back because if I allowed myself to look back, I may have gone back. And so when we start moving forward, when we start looking forward, sometimes we can't look back. Sometimes we can only look back to remind ourselves of where we're coming from and where we intend to go. So be uncomfortable, but be willing to step out of the box because that will make you comfortable. I'm willing to step out of the box.